every day till we get to heaven somebody will discover something new about god and in that discovery will come another manifestation once upon a time there was an apostle who carried a mantle of fire who spoke the counsel of jehovah with confirmation accuracy and precision and who devastated the works of satan apostle king omudu unveiling truth i want to start a teaching that i titled the dominion power of the mind if that's too long for you, call it dominion mentality. The dominion power of the mind, the human mind, the human mind. It's possible that the mind being a subject in the church can startle some people because of setting misconceptions that are not founded on truth. Let me make a statement or two just to stare you in the direction of the fault tonight. Number one statement. Redemption did not relegate the mind. Salvation did not relegate the mind of man. It did not. Without saying it, religion postures to suggest that the mind is a distraction to spirituality. The mind is a distraction to spirituality. That is how religion postures. That's why, without anybody saying anything, it's almost like when you get born again, you are no longer allowed to use your mind. As though the mind is in conflict with God. The statement I made is based on truth. Redemption did not relegate the mind. It did not make the mind a no issue. Like the mind is no longer important and is not part of spirituality. That is not true. Even though in most cases these things are not necessarily captured in words but they appear in our disposition they appear in our attitude to seem to suggest that true spirituality suspends the mind and you don't need to the mind is, the mind is no longer useful when you have Power. when you are spiritually powerful or you are spiritual that is a misconception you cannot use this same bible to validate that claim or that assertion or that assumption let me call it an assumption instead because it's, it's, it's more or less like it's in that realm of assumption so redemption did not relegate the mind that you are born again does not mean your mind is useless in your following God in your serving God in your being a child of God actually the opposite should be the case hmm. who is following me so far let me make another statement that probably will steer again a desire to hear what we're sharing today. Spirituality with wrong mentality results in mediocrity. 
results in a life that is at its best a mediocre life who heard that second statement you didn't hear that one okay let me perceive this audience again who heard the first statement so what was the first statement redemption did not what relegate the mind And you had one or two explanations that went with that. The second statement is spirituality without without or with the wrong mentality. Spirituality with the wrong mentality results in mediocrity. Below average existence that you are born again filled with the Holy Ghost and power does not exonerate you from the right mentality that you are born again you even used to have encounters our Nigerian lingo today in the church encounters you have encounters every day fire appears to you angels follow God the Father comes behind and all of that is going on with you every day. You hear angels singing. If you have the wrong mentality, the true value of spirituality will not be given expression to in your own life. It doesn't matter the kind of encounters you're having. One of the worst, even nature itself teaches us that one of the worst things that can happen to a human being is a damaged mind. Who knows what a damaged mind is? In the worst case scenario, we call it insanity. Less than that, we talk about other things, mind-altering activities. Whether it is an outright madness, or somebody that exists in a state of altered consciousness. Both of them will never reach full potential unless their minds are cured of their diseases. Who understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you are not careful, religion will want to put the mind on the back seat and make it look like it's not part of your walk with God and is not needed. Once you are in Christ. All this we can prove from the Bible that is not true. It's not true. Now, when you study the account of the creation of man, there's a lot of revelation there. But let me begin with one. You know that in Genesis chapter 2 was actually when man was formed. Oh? Huh? Hello now. You remember? Okay, let me explain something. The creation of man, I hope you know, that the creation of man, what they call the creation of man, man means the species, that's you, me, the other sister, all of us. The creation of man happened in two phases. Did you ever realize that? I'm talking about in the open text of the Bible, your own Bible. If you open the Bible, you will see, in case you have not observed it, man, the process that manifested the, this, 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 Adam that manifested human man means Adam. The process that brought forth Adam happened twofold. I will explain that in a bit. But eventually, when the man came forth, how did he come forth? God took clay, molded his body, the outward. Am I correct? He molded the outward. And then the Bible says he breathed into his nostrils. So he put his spirit, right? 
That's the spirit. Breath is spirit. The word for breath is spirit. He put his spirit within the clay that he made. Okay? The body was made and the breath, which is the life, came from God's own life. So what God actually gave to man is his very life. His spirit. Where did it? <laughs> Upon that molded clay. And the first thing that happened was that the Bible said man became a living soul. Who remembers that? Now, I've told you before. Maybe you don't remember so I can repeat it for best repetition. The soul of man was a product of the contact between the body of man and the spirit of God when the spirit of God hit the body of man that he made the soul was born that was when the soul was born he didn't necessarily create the soul it was a result of the contact between his breath and the body that he formed out of the dust of the earth. So the miracle of the soul happened like that. So man got a soul. If man got a soul in his innocence, in his near perfect state, he needed to have a soul. It meant that his soul have or has a role to play in his destiny or his calling of dominion. Because he was made to have what? Dominion. And when he was made to commence function, a soul had to come into being. So, the soul, which is what we call the mind, has a role to play in man's ultimate calling or whatever you want to call it, of dominion. There is no way that the God-man could have had dominion if he did not possess a soul. That's why a soul had to be born the day he came alive. Who has followed so far? Are you sure? Okay. So, some people do not agree with this. I believe it. That the real man is the spirit in that man. That's the real man. His body was given to him so that he can make contact with his jurisdiction, his territory, where he has been placed, where he is domiciled. Because he had to have the same substance as the earth for him to engage the earth accurately. Who understands that? That's why he had to be made out of the substance of the earth. But his real life is that spirit life because even this earth he only has it oh, this earth I, this i call it body this body i call it earth this body he only has it temporarily who, re, who remembers that it's not a permanent thing but even after this body goes away the man lives on who remembers that as well he lives on so who is the real man then i believe is the invisible part of him who understand what i'm saying So he's a, he has a, he's a spirit or has a spirit and then he's given a body to function. The connection to this function was a soul that was born at the contact of the spirit and the body. This is the first revelation you must have about the usefulness of the human soul. Without it, 
and it functioning accurately, man cannot truly have dominion. God made sure he had a soul because God understands that one of the instruments, equipments, tools, or tool that he is going to need to exercise dominion was that soul. So he had to have it. The soul is his mind. Is the seat of his one thoughts. Two imaginations. Three will. Four. What is four? Huh? Huh? Emotion. His thoughts, his imagination, his will, and his emotion. That is the realm of the soul. And God made sure he has one for him to walk in dominion. Just like God himself. Listen to this statement. Just like God himself also has a mind. Who knows that God has a mind? Who believes that God has a mind? You believe it? Ooh. You believe God has a mind? Do you believe that just because you assume it or you believe that because it's in the Bible that God has a mind? How many of you know from scripture that God has a mind? Of course from scripture he has a mind. God has a mind. God has a mind. If you think your mind is useless and needless. Is it possible also that God has a needless and useless one? If God has it and he gave it to you, it means it is useful. Who thinks that's logical to process like that? God has it. Help, lift your hand and say, God has a mind. He has a mind. He has a mind. He's my, he has a functional mind. And creation demonstrates that God does not function without his mind. I can show, you, show that to you now. He does not. And yet he's a spirit. And we are here, humans, trying to live that spiritual life after the fall of man. And we think that we can put our minds at the back burner because it conflicts with spirituality. That is wrong. Spirituality in a wrong mentality at best is a life of mediocrity. Maybe some of you are shocked that you are hearing this in church. Because you, you are, maybe we've been taught that all we need to do is just be spiritual, be powerful. Just be spiritual. And, and some Christians today do not actually use their minds. It's almost like they live on borrowed minds, other people's minds. People think for them. People, do you understand what I'm saying? People see for them. People practically set a boundary on them. Using their own mind, why they do not use their own? Redemption did not relegate the human mind. It is your whole spirit, soul, and body that the Bible says should be sanctified. All three parts. That's what is in the scripture. Your whole spirit, soul, body. You are not complete. If you are not functioning optimally as a spirit, soul, and a body. I'll say that again. I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care how many visions you see in one day. I don't care how many times Jesus has appeared to you. You are not complete. If you are not functioning accurately, wholly as a spirit, soul, and body. It is not just your spirit that should be powerful and all of that. Your body must be in shape and your soul, your mind 
must be in an excellent condition. That's why when you got born again, one of the advice that you were given in the Holy Writ is that let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. Am I correct? Am I correct now? Mm. So you didn't get born again to throw away your mind. And if you have thrown away your mind, because the way some Christians move and function in life is like they no longer have a mind. And that the, the more they, they silence their mind and make it useless, the more spiritual they become. That is a lie. God who is the most spiritual God or spiritual being, if you will, has a functional mind that he puts to work consistently. I told you again that one of the worst things that can happen to a human being is the lust of the use of their mind is the one of the worst thing he can go to to like our young people these days he can go to russia or some some far something somewhere and go and study medicine and get a first and a second degree and comes back to nigeria and gets a good employment and on the day he's supposed to start work he loses his mind all of those degrees are useless. Who understands what I'm saying here? Are you aware that census that enumerates everybody, including, pardon my use, pardon my use, just to get the message clear, including disabled, census enumerates everybody, even if you are disabled, census will enumerate you. Blind, deaf, crippled, Whatever you are eligible for enumeration, the only person that is exempted from enumeration is madman. He's not crippled, he's not blind, he's not deaf in that sense, but he's disabled in his mind. As far as society is concerned, he's no longer functional, he's as good as he does not exist. Who understands what I'm saying? If you threw your mind away because you got born again, quickly run to where you threw it away as I'm talking now and go and pick it up because you need it. If not, no matter how spiritual you become, your life will be a manifestation of mediocrity. You need a functional, accurate, excellence mind to have dominion in this world. This world needs a working mind. To rule over it. This world. Society. Needs a working mind. To rule over it. And God did not hide from us. That he used his own mind. And he's still using it. I'm sure you are aware that God thinks right. You don't know that God thinks. That's a function of the mind. God imagines. <laughs> God wills don't you know God wills he what wills that's a function of the soul it's within the soul power praise the Lord praise the Lord as I am talking in case you got born again filled with fire and you started burning and you threw away your mind I want you to journey in that mind Go back to where you threw your mind away and pick it up quickly. Because that may be the reason why you are not functioning in dominion right now. Because you need it. You need it. All the faculties of the human mind are instruments of dominion. I will come to that later. They are instruments of dominion. All the faculties of the human mind whether it is emotion, and some people think that emotion is just emotion, huh? just feeling, and it's not important. If you truly know the power of emotion, you will know how empires rise and fall on emotion. Things have been built because emotion was dead, and many things have been destroyed when emotion was also stirred. Who understands what I just said now? It, out of a stead emotion, some people have been killed before. 
Emotion stirred. Somebody got angry. Took knife. Killed another. A life ended. And you tell me emotion is nothing. Emotion is not nothing. In fact, the true meaning of emotion, E, is energy. Motion. Energy in motion. So emotion is powerhouse. There is no aspect of the mind, of the, of the faculty of the soul that is not an equipment. You were equipped with your thoughts, the, the faculty of thoughts. You were equipped with the faculty of imagination. You were equipped with the faculty of the will. You were equipped, equipped, equipped for dominion. I mean, look at your neighbor, tell them, don't lose your mind. You can lose anything, but please don't lose your mind. Even if you lose money, don't lose your mind. In Romans chapter 12, the Bible spoke to two parts of you. Or he spoke to you, and he didn't even talk about your spirit. If you look at verses 1 and 2, he talked about your body. And he talked about your mind. But look at what he said about your mind in verse 2. Verse 2, please. Look at what he said. He said, now let's read it together. One, two, go. But so far, who is following me so far? Even if you don't understand it fully yet, but at least you are following my thoughts. We are going together. Um, are you confused already? So that I can go back and re-explain. Hi. Be not conformed to this world. I hope you know who he's talking to. This is a born-again spirit. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church, the believer. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. You talk, you talk in tongues. You cast out demons. You are a demon chaser. How many demon chasers do we have here? Good. You are a demon chaser. You are a soul winner. Powerful for Jesus. Then he turns to you and he said, Be not conformed to this world. That word conform means to be fashioned after the pattern of. Okay? But be what? That word transform metamorphu is to change literally after the order of the English word metamorphosis which is to graduate from one stage to another from pupa to lava from lava to butterfly elementary science who remembers that that is change the faces of life you accurately transact it be changed, be elevated, get out the better version of yourself. Because every stage of your life, there's a better version of you. Woo, they don't believe me. Even the best of us here, there is still a better version of you that the world has not seen yet. Oh, nobody's understanding what I'm saying. This is what wakes me up every morning with hope. There's a king of Mudu that the world has not seen yet. There's a king of Mudu that nobody knows about yet. Not even the closest person to me, my wife, knows yet. Because even this king of Mudu doesn't know that king of Mudu yet. But he exists. Way better, more glorious than this version you are seeing. My prayer is that you will continue to evolve. You will continue to metamorphose. You will never become stagnant at any stage of your existence. In your human experience, you will never become stale. You will continue to emerge and emerge and emerge and emerge. Do you know that that is how your God is? Your God is a mysterious one. If anybody tells you that he has known God, that person is a joker. Because the more you say you have known God, that's when you really don't know him. Because those who have known him more than you still don't know him. Now, you, do you understand why Paul the Apostle, after 30 years of preaching the gospel in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power, preaching the gospel to whole continents, turning everywhere, right side up for God, and even being called a God at some point. 
He cried out and said that I may know him. That's the kind of God you serve. He's inexhaustible. Who understands that? Do you know what I told you? That's why the angels call him holy. Because the more you behold him, the less you know. If you saw him in the last two seconds and you said, this is how brilliant God is. And you took your eye to look at that speaker and turn back in one blink of an eye. He has become more glorious than the last glory you saw. Ayah. Who understands what I'm saying? He has become more glorious than the last glory that you saw. Praise God. Who is understanding me? And that is how he made you. Because he made you in his image and likeness. He didn't make you to be predictable. One of the things that you should reclaim after your salvation is the unpredictability of a man born of the spirit. It's not supposed to be predictable. It's not, no, 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 no. Well, I don't mean predictable in the sense of you don't know, maybe he's not, he's, he's an emotional wreck. No. You cannot conclude about a man that is born of the spirit of God. Because what you see him today and you say this is his definition. He is like this. This is how he is. This is how far he has gone. If you take your eyes and look somewhere, before you turn back, that man can move to another stage of life. And the good thing is we don't move downward. We don't retrogress. Why? The part of the just is as a bright shining light. It shines what? Brighter and brighter. In other words, no matter what happens, men are not supposed to see a worst of you. It's supposed to be a best of you. Every day going forward. Who believes that? That's why the Bible says we are going from what? Glory to glory. Not from shame to glory. No, glory to glory. You, you, people think they have seen your best. They should wait. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying here. Yeah. They should wait until after this sermon. People think they have seen your best. They should wait until after 2024. People think they have seen your best. You are in the image of this God. Hallelujah. Encourage me. I'm preaching good. And I drove three and a half hours to come preach this thing to you. You better encourage me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I drove from Abuja three and a half hours. Got into my house after 4 p.m. to start coming to church just to preach this word to you. You better receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when people conclude on you, they made mistake. But if you conclude on yourself, you are very ignorant. Your best? Who dare say they have seen your best? Do they know what your best is? The glory that is to come. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Oh my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found God. You know me, I, see, there are people who are uncomfortable when people despise them, look down on them. I'm never uncomfortable. When people look down on me, despise me, I'm never uncomfortable. Most of those times, that is when the greater glory shows up for me. You remember my story of going to preach in Bauchi State many years ago. This should be around 1998 or something. Uh, 1998, 99. I went to preach in Bauchi State for the National Youth Corpus Conference. Just imagine yours sincerely now and take 1998 or 99. Uh, you, you, you get what I'm saying now? Who, who got what I just said? Now, don't look at me like that. I'm not your mate too. It's not my fault that I look younger. <laughs> my first child has finished university. Uh, so looking at me like that. But in 1999 or 98, that should be 98, not 99. 98, right? 99? Okay. In, mommy says 1999. I traveled to Bauchi State to go and represent my senior pastor to preach at the National Youth Corpus Conference. I got to Bauchi State 2 a.m. First day of the conference has passed. I am not the invited guest. I am representing my senior pastor. Who got that mix-up thing? Uh -huh. They picked me from the where, the where I, 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 I came through and took me to the lodge. The president of the fellowship did not see the speaker. Who did even come for the first day? The next session was going to be a morning session. I missed the night session. The night sessions are the major sessions. 
The next day, president of fellowship came to see the speaker. This is King Omudu in 1999. If you allow your imagination to insult me. Oh. <laughs> 1999. The speaker came to see me just as suspected. He was the, the, the president. He was disgusted. He was, he was disappointed, bewildered. He couldn't hide his feelings. He gave it to me in his attitude, in his looks, in his everything. Because you don't blame him. You understand what I'm saying? You don't blame him. But I was the one taking the heat. <laughs> and I got that. And which is not, which doesn't, so for some people they will lose it. I don't lose it then. When you don't give me a chance, I will give me a chance. That's how I behave. <laughs> if you don't want me to do anything, don't tell me not to do it. Tell me you can't do it. It's finished. It's done. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so when I got that reception, very warm reception. So he said, we'll see you in the meeting. We'll see you in the meeting. We'll see you inside. So while we're in the morning, to cut long story short, they came and picked me from the hotel, wherever I was staying. I can't even remember what, where, where, where I was staying, but they picked me and took me to the venue of the meeting. When I got to the meeting, I sat down. I was sitting like this. Presido was sitting like this. The guy that did the connection to bring my senior pastor was sitting like this and all of that. And uh, Presido wrote on a sheet of paper and gave me. You have one hour as the spirit leads. Who got confused? Like I got confused. No, you have one hour is English. Where spirit leads, connected with it. Till today, I am still at a loss. But I got it. I knew what it means. In other words, <laughs> whatever you have to do, don't let the spirit lead you beyond one hour. Because you are not the one we want to see. Unknown to him, his attitude to me earlier on had already touched something. I tell you this before God, I lie not. God and Satan are my witnesses on this matter. I got the note and I went, when it was time, I climbed the pulpit. I spent 15 minutes the power of God hit the room. Because in those days, they were crazy about falling under the anointing, demonstration. Where we used to be crazy about those who were younger then. We thought that real ministry is when people fall under anointing and healing and all that. We were young. We didn't know it was just gifts. So, and they didn't know I, I was developed in that area. I got on the pulpit. The power of God fell. Everyone was on the floor weeping and crying, including President and in the spirit, president took a note and wrote, man of God, I have become man of God now. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> he wrote, man of God, go on as the spirit leads. I can never forget that day. <laughs> what he didn't know is that what I wanted to see, I have seen. All of them are on the floor. I don't need another, I don't need a sermon. Whether you believe me or not, you know I'm a man of God. When he sent his note and said, continue as the spirit leads, I pack my Bible. Spirit has finished leading. And I jet out of the place. Look at your neighbor, tell them the best is yet to come. Look at another neighbor, tell them I will surprise you. Woo! You are supposed, listen, you are supposed to be a surprise. That is ever emerging, ever evolving, ever coming. If they see you today, what they should know is that I am still coming. I'm still coming. You think you have seen, I'm still coming. Hallelujah. But for this possibility to become a manifest reality, you need to be a functional being. In the image and likeness of God. 
you are you were created tripartite every part must be equally sanctified because Paul the apostle your whole spirit soul and body not your spirit and body every part and the part of emphasis that a lot of today's Christianity does not want to acknowledge is the mind there are things you will never be able to give expression to until the connection between your soul and your sorry, between your soul spirit and body are accurate and functional you cannot use prayer and fasting to replace excellent mentality you can't it is part of the dominion equipment it's part of the dominion equipment that's why we preach that's why we teach so that your soul can be enhanced look at what Paul said by the Holy Ghost in that scripture we're reading be not conformed to this world but be ye what ever changing imagine into a better version how by the renewing of your spirit of your body of your what that is not ambiguous he's actually talking about the mind the mind and he's talking to you born again filled with the holy ghost he said you still need your mind functioning at its best you still need good thoughts good imagination are you hearing what i'm saying let me let me show you something because my time goes off in 14 minutes just look at creation let's let's see something about the creation of man Genesis chapter 1 of course you know the story in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and then you see all that follows huh who saw all of it there huh there will be light and all of that you saw, you saw all of that in verse 26 read verse 26 27 and 28 the one I'll be reading 26 27 and 28 I'm taking you straight to the creation of man I don't want to bother you with the other things but I, I can tell you no, let's leave it. Let me not confuse you. Let me take one step at a time. Look at verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and the, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man. So what? So God created man. In his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them next verse and god did what blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fire of the air and over all, over every living thing that moved upon the face of the earth now go to chapter 2 <laughs> uh, let me read it, all of it and then I'll tell you something in chapter 2 look at the opening statement of verse 1 opening statement read it 1 to go thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them and on the seventh day God did what ended his work which he had what made Take note of that. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had, which means, this statement means that this is conclusion, right? Everything is finished. Let us make man, and he made man. Is that not what Genesis 1 say? Huh? Okay. Let us make man, he made man, even went ahead to bless him. Go to chapter 2. Look down 
adverse uh, let's start from verse 4 let's start from verse 4 and these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord created or God made 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 the earth and the heavens are you noticing that there are two words that are being used like they are interchangeable God created God made who is noticing all that dichotomy all right. so and in the day the Lord made God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God has not caused the rain or rain or caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground but there, were, there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground verse 7 and God did what and God did what form the man of the dust of the ground breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became if you are not confused here then you are very intelligent I thought he has made man and had even blessed him and even finished his work or works and rested that's why I say remember the two words the first word is create the other word is made when it came to man the word was also used but differently let us make man was made man in our image in the image of God created them male and female created them huh? he was first made in chapter 1 then he was formed in chapter 2 but when he was made it was a complete job because it was so finished that the two of them were in manifestation to the extent that the Bible says he blessed them but when he formed it was man that he first made and then made the man to sleep took the ribs out of his side and formed a woman ah. you are still not confused because I want you to be confused he made finished it even blessed them the two of them but when he formed man appeared went to sleep then woman followed so who did he make and blessed and finished and rested the job was finished before it started if you didn't notice that the job was completed before it was made because he had already created the two of them has already blessed them has already told them to be fruitful has already told them to have dominion over the earth then he went and now started forming and it was man that came first and woman came next where what is going on here <laughs> i told you in the beginning that the creation of man happened twice first man was made then he was formed first man was what made then he was formed in Genesis 1 26 to 28 he was made in Genesis 2 7 he was formed in Genesis 1 26 to 27 where he was made and God even went as far as blessing him and his wife all of that activity was a manifestation of the workings of the divine mind they were made 
in the mind of God and he concluded in his imagination and thoughts everything about them in his mind until he even imagine when he even blessed them oh God have mercy everything you read in chapter 1 was occurring in the divine mind it was not actual physical work because it took chapter 2 for the physical work to begin he was made in the mind of God but formed in the hand of God and it is only what the mind the divine mind makes that the divine hand forms Ooh, they didn't hear what I said if you didn't get this one I will leave you to go and think about it till next week Wednesday it is what the divine mind formed who was he blessing and who was he telling to take dominion they were not even existing physically they were existing in his mind he was imagining everything you read in verse 26 to 28 <laughs> that's why he finished it in the perfect way he wanted it done before he ever took the first clay this is how the divine mind works if you get this revelation your life must shift this is why it is cheating if you do not use your mind to bring forth the counsel of God deliberately God brought forth his counsel first in his mind before his hand moved and we do the exact opposite because we are spiritual until we even think we are more spiritual than God our hands move before our minds walk God's mind move before his hand walks God's mind moves before his hand walks. God's mind moves before his hand walks. God makes before he forms. What is the meaning of that? In the divine mind and equation, design happens before production. It's just a process of design and manufacturing. This is how God works. In Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, it was just the design. Nothing was tangible yet, but it was so real to God and so vivid that he had already nailed them down, blessed them, spoken to them, gave them instruction. All of that were happening in his mind. The actual work only started after the mental work was finished. This is where the power lies. I'm talking about <laughs> dominion mentality. God moves first on the inside before he moves on the outside. That's why the Bible can say he determines the end from the beginning who understand how god works he does what he determines where do you think that, that that takes place in the mind you remember when he said my thoughts are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways as the heavens are higher than so are my thoughts from your tell your neighbor god thinks mm. but his frequency is very high but don't take that statement literally to mean anything to you as a believer now because in Christ, the Bible says you have the mind of Christ. That was to the unregenerated people of those days. God's thought is so high from the fallen man. But the mind of a functional believer that is being renewed can come up to the elevated state of the mind of Christ. Who understands what I just said now? Yes. That is where we should be. Not claiming God's thought is not our thought. No, you don't claim that. That's not a promise. That's a rebuke. Go and study the scripture. That one is a rebuke. But at least he establishes to us that God thinks before he acts. Many of us act before we think. And that is where failure is. 
because you are acting without energy. You are acting without power. You are acting with, you understand what I just said now? Whoa. Are you aware that it, one of the primary way that power can flow into your life is through the activity of your mind? Are you aware of that? Oh my. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians 3.20. Thank you, Jesus. Please give us that scripture quickly. Ephesians 3.20. We are out of time. We are uh, okay. We are, we are still one minute in time. Read this scripture. One to go. Now unto him. There is a power that works in you. Two things can bring that power into manifestation. One is prayer. Another one is mentality. The activity of your mind. And those activities are not plenty. Don't get confused. They are just four. They are your thoughts, your imagination, your emotion, your, your will, and your emotion. That's all. Those four faculties have been configured to be able to pull power out of your spirit. When you are thinking, you are projecting power. When you are imagining, you are not just daydreaming. If you are born again and filled fill with the Holy Ghost, you are releasing power. Power. You are releasing power. Who told you that you can be effective on earth just having a buoyant spirit alone? That, can't you see that many people that are deeply religious are often not excellent in life? I'm not insulting anybody. Just stating the obvious. If you have been around for a while, who understood what I just said now? Many people that are deeply religious, let me not say spiritual, many people that are deeply religious are some of the most not so excellent people in life because they think that you don't need a good head once your spirit is okay and you are sincere. You need a good functional head. I will continue this thing next Wednesday because there's so much to say. Who is hearing what I'm saying? You need a good functional head that the Bible did not even allow you after salvation to leave yourself in the same level of thought, imagination, and all of that. He said transform by renewing. To renew means to update, upgrade the mind to the level of your new status. There is a way a believer should use their mind to be consistent with the power of redemption. Many who are praying and following God are losing the battle in their soul. While their spirit remains powerful. But where you want to operate, you need more than a spirit to operate. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. 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 I prayed for you before I came. While I was driving here, I was praying. And this is why I was praying. That this thing be clear. That's why you see many people in the body of Christ. They have all the religious garb and all the religious activity. But their life themselves are not excellent. Even some people in church are envying some unbelievers. Because in reality, those unbelievers, not because of iniquity, just excellence of life. Their life is in the upward trajectory. They are unbelievers. They are spirit dead and disconnected from God. 
but they know how to use their mind, the only resource that is now active and good for them. And they are able to move their life without believing in Jesus. And here we are, we believe in Jesus and live like Jesus is a mediocre. That's an upside down arrangement. And the greater part of this challenge is a mentality problem. A mind that is not being updated, upgraded to the new life. You think that Jesus was foolish? Even when he answered questions, they wonder how he processes. You understand what I'm saying? They wonder how he thinks. Even when he answers a question. Because of the excellent mentality. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Because of the excellent mentality. Because of the excellent mentality. Look at the people that followed him in the beginning. Some of them were even ignorant and unlearned. Who remembers that? You remember they called them ignorant and unlearned? I hope you know first and second Peter was written by an ignorant and unlearned man. Bring out the last test you wrote. The SMS you sent to somebody. When you see the grammatical errors inside, you wonder who you are copying. Peter did not go to school, but he wrote first and second Peter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who understand what I'm saying? And the book, the work is, is accurate. Yet the man is an ignorant and unlearned man. So being born again actually upgraded his mentality. He shouldn't bury our own. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Christians should not be the last to think. We should be the first to think. Christians should not be the last to imagine the right things. Because we have been given a book that gives us a picture of even things to come. You can take the Bible and you can actually project a future with accuracy and precision in your mind without confusion. That's what the Bible calls meditation. We'll talk more about that. Who learned anything tonight? Did it make sense to you? Are you sure? Are you sure you are not confused about anything? It's so basic and so simple. But I keep asking, do you understand? Because if you understand this thing, your life will start changing. When I see the behavior of certain Christians, I can see the lowness of their mentality. When they do the right things at the wrong time, it's a mentality problem. You go to the office, your boss gives you a letter to type quickly. Quickly, you, you heard the word quickly. I need to deliver this letter in one hour. Quickie. Quickie. And you collect the letter and you even did the Christian genuflexion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You know, and you carry the letter. You go to your office. You drop the letter on the table. Huh? And then you sit down. You sit down. You first of all check all the, the WhatsApp messages that came to your phone when you were on your way to the office. So that you can see what you need to respond to. You respond to the WhatsApp messages. You quickly really dash to Facebook to see what's the latest info. And all the other things, tick tock, and all the likes, you check them out, you notice all the things going on, you even comment in some, and then you take the phone, you do a selfie in the office now. That's 30 minutes gone. You are supposed to deliver in an hour. Who understands what I'm saying? Then you now remember Jesus. And you just remember that your office is not, not tidy yet. So you start fixing the office. And you remember Jesus says that greeting Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. Hallelujah. And then you just remember that you didn't finish your prayer. You overslept. So you humble koshi kalimono. Emvretu zivla. And the spirit takes over you. Huh? The spirit. I put that in quote. Takes over you. Braku zibidi. And 
And then one hour fully passed and your boss rings the bell. You didn't answer. He comes open the door and you are there in the spirit. And he gives you a query and you say persecution. Sinners are persecuting believers. God will judge you. The only person God will judge in that company is you. Because you are on your way out. You understand what I'm saying? That's poverty of mentality. He puts Christians last instead of first. And unbelievers are ahead. Christians are busy graduating with third class because they are the, they are the fellowship leaders in their campus. Every day, mentality problem. Mentality problem. Mentality problem. When you pray, when you should be studying, you have a poor mentality. Who heard what I said? Do you pray? Jesus, I'm a man of prayer. And there's no teaching you can teach me in this world that will stop me from praying. Do you know why? For me, prayer is not a collection point. Prayer is interaction with the divine. And I need it every day. Mingling. I'm not going to go and collect anything because I've collected everything already. Mingling. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Are you with me still? Where you should be studying. You are in the opposite direction because you didn't arrange your life well because of bad mentality. No matter how good God is, you can't excel. You are going to have dominion in this world. You must have a functional mentality. No matter how spiritual you are, this world will not give you way if all you have is a powerful spirit with capital letter tongues. Bongi kambum. If that's all you have, the church will make way for you. Even me, I will give you a chance because you can blow somebody. But the world will never make way for you. Because after you finish your capital letter tongues, the world is looking for solution. Solution producing minds. And they should come from Zion. And we are delivering the opposite. Christians backward in mentality. They think that the mind of Christ is a disabled mind. No. It's an excellent mind. It's a winning mind. It's a solution producing mind. It's a mind that design perfection. You can design a business idea and it is second to none. Is a man that arranges things and the things are so arranged that nobody has seen that kind of arrangement before. That's the mind of Christ. Not a mind that is locked, backward, outdated, outmoded, out, outquated, antiquated. A mind that is upward and mobile, lighted by heaven. Not a mind that is dwelling on small things at the expense of big things. Just only seeing the smaller pictures. Little things. But a mind that is fully active because the word of God has quickened it. Who understand what I'm saying here? Don't miss next Wednesday. We will settle this matter. If we are going to have dominion in this world, we need a functional mentality. A functional mentality. While we are praying and powering up, something should be coming out. Not all hidden inside. Stand to your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 If you come to shout out glory, one of the first things you're going to learn is that your mind is not useless. It's very useful. And it has to be deliberately put to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of God is going to flow through you. But it will flow through an accurate thought and imagination. Accurate thought and imagination. Not a mind that is bedeviled with defeat. Flogged and beat down. No, that mind can't handle the energy level of the power of God within. No, it's too low. It's too low. Come on. This is dominion I'm talking about. 
it works with a dominion mindset speak in tongues loud everybody live for menai esususikala freteteleta aiboko menamo linoma teleba latu zeveleka yaba entila brota monakate emfelete barote vratazu jefela kato emfrete buta aiboko mena brado zagadi emfelete barando skipota Aye, shatalaba, eva kata barata, levekete brado zigede, levrekete mantos, emfra koza kwate, levra toki mana, embelekete brado ziante, le kaboru zeve lava tege, ligabora teza valane la be la be, emfra tezuze se le bragadi. Evato zakele bratato velane, Evato zakate barane manaye, Jekele baba baba lote bede, Aya mana mana mana, Evrekete belete bradosia, Evaya toa zakwate, Evrekete le brados, Melika mana mone mene, Aiva la kwa sokote, Evrete tete, Ambo koto le brandosiata. Efa kote mene Aiba baba bokoto Efra tatwa tete Jete tete le brete kete Jete tete le brato zitataya Efa kate mene mene me Aswa tele kaya Enka boto ya te Jete le kaboruta Jete tete le brato ziata Jete kwa tatata Je kwata tuata kate Ombre te 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 le bre te kwata Je veke te brato zi kate Je kwata ta la brodo En fe ke te brato zi a te En she kwata la brodo ti ta la da En fe ke te brato zi a te nga ya En vre de te te bere de En vagadu rato zi da En fe ke te brato zi a kwate te Hey! Put your right hand on your head and tell yourself, I have the mind of Christ. 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 Now speak in tongues for another few seconds. Speak in tongues in that posture. Barato zegede. Efekete brado siata. Efalata barada. Efregete zuzesia. Efekete brado siata. Lepaka tutete. Efelekete manaha. Aya baba baba bobo bobo. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. I pray that the light of God's word will shine in your hearts this day like never before in the name of Jesus. From glory to glory. That is your story. I say from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. A better version of you is imagined. A stronger version of you is emerging. A healthier version of you is emerging. I don't like that your amen at all. A greater version of you is emerging. In the name of Jesus. Give a Lord a clap and a shout in the house of God. Glory to God. Were you blessed? You sure? You sure? Are you sure? Were you blessed? Then give him another hand of praise. Please take your seat. Apostle King Omudu, unveiling truth.